So in a lot of my videos, I talk about the use of various different classes for farms and the use of farming characters. And a lot of people I realize don't have access to these characters. And as a result, as well as the gold guides that I've been bringing out, I thought it might be helpful if I brought out some leveling guides to help you get some farming characters up to speed. So with that in mind, I decided today to bring out a video on my favorite method of leveling alts that quite frankly is just ludicrous in its effectiveness. So let's dive in. Now, a big disclaimer before we begin for this leveling method is that you do require a second account in order to be able to do this or alternatively a friend who is willing to help. Now, this second account, the account that doesn't contain the alt that you're wanting to level, does need to have access to a relatively high level monk. The higher the level the monk, the higher level that you'll be able to do the boosting of, of the character that you are wanting to level. So of course, if you are only looking to get one up to say level 60 or so, pretty much any monk will do, providing it has access to Black, the Black Ox statue, but the higher level, the better. Particularly if you get it high enough that you can gain access to all of the movement speed abilities that are required. So 110 plus is ideal. Now, the method itself is quite simple. It's in essence, all we're going to do is we are going to be rounding up an entire dungeon. The dungeon will vary dependent on the level of the alt that you are leveling. And we're going to gather every single mob that we can in the dungeon, put it in one place, and then by use of some clever mechanics, allow we will have our alt AOE down all of the mobs without having to suffer from the experience penalty of having a high level character hit the mobs. The high level character we're using is going to be entirely used for the pulling of the mobs and the presence of a black ox statue. Now, how this works is that essentially when pulling the mobs, the high level character will of course enter combat and essentially tag the mobs as it were for the experience reduction. However, what we're going to do is once we've collected all of these mobs, we are going to have our low level character who will be group leader kick our high level character from the group after the final ox statue is placed that has rounded the mobs at where we want them to be. Our low level character will then AoE and apply some damage to every single mob that has been pulled by our high level character. We will then reinvite our high level character before the one minute timer expires that would kick the character from the group and place them outside of the dungeon. And at this point then, providing you do not touch your high level character, you just leave it out of the way, you can use your low level character to AoE down the mobs and gain full experience. Now, this trick is often considered by some people to be exploitative, but I personally have been using it for a long time and do not believe that it breaks any terms of service. But if you aren't comfortable using this method, then please don't but I find it very unlikely that anyone is going to suffer at the hands of leveling this way. A bigger concern, however, is the capacity to execute this correctly. Now, making even the smallest of errors can cause this method not to work, and the amount of errors that you can make are numerous, so here are a few that I want to ensure that you avoid. First of all, the simplest one is that your high level character does not want to deal damage to any characters in the dungeon. You simply want to pull the mobs and then have them all grouped up without dealing damage to them. If you kill any mobs, obviously you're just going to have those mobs be dead and not have the experience for your ult. The next most common mistake made is that people who are doing this method will AoE the mobs once they're all grouped up without kicking the monk from the group and this will tag them with the monk present and essentially you'll kill all of the mobs but get a very 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 small percentage of the experience that you would otherwise have acquired so please do kick your monk then aoe and tag all of the mobs and then reinvite the monk and thirdly not so much of a mistake that people make but something that people just aren't aware of when they go to take part in this method is that of course your alt does need to have the aoe capacities to be able to kill all of the mobs now, most classes get access to AoE damage fairly early, but some, like rogues for example, do not get it until quite late. 
and unfortunately there doesn't seem to be a decent reliable method of providing any items or such that would do AoE damage to kill these mobs. There are some ways that you can do it, but they prove to be incredibly expensive and not really worthwhile doing. An alternative for these characters that I found is that before they acquire AoE damage, if you can head to a dungeon that is easily completable very fast, so something like Stockades or Ragefire Chasm, you can use this method to kill all of the dungeon leaving just the last boss and then use the same method exactly as you normally would with just the last boss hitting the statue and then use single target damage to kill the final boss. This will give the dungeon completion credit entirely to your ult which is a reasonably substantial amount of experience. As to whether it competes with questing or not, that's up to you to decide as it does depend greatly on the amount of damage you are able to output single target on that boss. Now, the levels that this is available for in principle start from level 8 when you can first zone into Ragefire Chasm, all the way up to the maximum of the levels that you can boost with your Black Ox statue not dying to the mobs. But reliably and consistently at the moment, I use this method up to about level 80 as I do not have a dungeon on the list of dungeons that I use that goes past Hellfire Ramparts, which is the level cap of 80 for where this method will still grant decent experience. Now, there are a lot of dungeons you can use with this method. In essence, there is no dungeon that you can't use, but there are certainly ones that are more efficient. The top tips that I want to give is that you want mob dungeons with high mob density and with relatively small size. Similarly, on another note, you do want to be able to use dungeons where you can easily return to the beginning of the dungeon where your alt will be waiting for the mobs to be pulled, otherwise it just adds extra travel time. So, in this video so far, you've mostly been watching me do Blackrock Depths. Now, Blackrock Depths is by far and away my favourite dungeon for this. It has a high level range starting from the low 40s all the way up to 60. And in essence, most of the time I get close to three levels per run of this dungeon. It does take a long time to gather the mobs as there are a lot of mobs and it's a relatively large area that we're covering for the pull. However, there are so many mobs that it makes it worthwhile. If you're going to get three levels in one run, then it doesn't really matter how long you're going to take to pull the mobs as it's going to be quicker than doing three full levels worth of questing. Alternatively, you can use other dungeons. Most popular that I am aware of is using stockades at lower levels before you have access to Blackrock Depths. And also some people like to use Strathome. Personally, it's not my favourite. Um, I find it to be really awkward to optimise a route for and there's just no real advantage to it over Blackrock Depths. And after that, I like to go to Hellfire Rampart. Now, one thing that you can do is that you can kill the bosses with your high level character while pulling the mobs if you use single target abilities. This does slightly reduce the amount of experience that you're going to get from the end pool for your ult. However, it does mean that you have a lack of a period where you will have all of the normal mobs dead and only bosses remaining around your statue and they'll be taking a considerably long time to kill. This tends to be a judgment call based on the damage output of your ult and something you may want to play around with because the experience lost compared to the time gained is something that is inherently variable. And the final point that I would like to make is that because of this method it is essentially a very simple method of gaining experience, it's just from killing mobs and completion experience, then you do benefit from the vast majority of experience benefits. By this, of course, I mean things like buffs that give increased amount of experience gained from items or other sources. So, of course, things like rested experience, the banners of cooperation, or if you are a particularly lucrative individual, then you could be using the elixirs of rapid mind, all of which work for this principle. Well, that's going to about wrap it up for this video guys i do hope that you found it particularly helpful if you did then please do consider liking the video it does help out a great deal and also if you want to be kept up to date with future videos then please do consider subscribing to the channel but that's going to do it for me today guys hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you in the next one later